Yeah, this is gonna awaken some weird shit in people. Hello everyone, Cookboss88 here, and today we're gonna be talking about Chicken Hair and the Hamster of Darkness. Yes, that is the name of this movie, and yes, it does sound weird. But I'm here to tell you right now that this movie, despite of its peculiar title, is actually half-decent. And that is about as nice as I can be when describing this film. What I can tell you about this movie is that it stars a character named Chicken Hare, and just as his name suggests, he is born part chicken and part hare. He was adopted by this daddy bait, oh, I mean, uh, Hare named Peter, who would one day become the king of an island in the middle of a goddamn ocean. King Peter, as we saw in the first few minutes of the film, is an adventurer and Chicken Hare just wants to be exactly like his daddy and go on adventures of his own. But oh no, he can't cause emotional turmoil and bullying and low self-esteem and being ashamed of who he is because he's the result of a hare and a chicken committing bad choices in a forest somewhere. Oh no, poor little hybrid. <laughs> Sorry. This is in fact your run of the mill finding out that your true self is your most powerful weapon kind of deal. And this true self is what he uses in order to defeat his evil uncle Lepan, the evil villain of the movie, who is hell bent on taking over the kingdom with the power of. Uh, okay, uh, let me see here. The power of a hamster army. Well, I mean, Professor Marmalade managed to do a bank heist with mind controlled guinea pigs, so I guess it's not as goofy as it sounds. Along the way in the movie, Lapan tricked his brother into leaving the kingdom in search of the staff that controls the hamster army. Of course, being how Lapan is such a dastardly villain, <laughs> he gave his brother the wrong coordinates, and that basically sends him off into a goose chase. But it just so happens that Chicken Hair has a good head on his shoulders and managed to figure out what Lapan figured out first, the actual wheel coordinates towards the staff that controls the hamster army. Chicken Hair tried to warn his father, but the ship that he was on had already left. So now it is up to our underdog protagonist and his pessimistic turtle friend slash servant named Abe to go on an adventure and find the staff scepter thingy before Lapan does. And before we go off on anything else, we gotta talk about this turtle, cause he's just the best. He held 90% of this movie's humor, and that is not really saying much, cause most of the time he just complains, but he does have his moments. With any luck, this is where we'll find our guy, or at least a communicable disease. Meg, if you're gonna side with me once before I die, you have about 10 seconds. Love you, Uncle Herbie. Whoa! So, they go on an adventure, they were in need of a guide, and so, they enlist the help of a skunk named Meg. The furry bait, I, I mean, the femme fatale of the movie. I don't really have to go into detail as to what her special ability is, right? She's a skunk, skunks are gonna do what skunks do best, firing stinky chemicals from their ass. And no, before you give me any shit about how I would sim for this skunk lady, know this, I don't really find her all that attractive. Sorry. So after Meg joins their crew, they go on their way. Later on, they come across a river's worth of quicksand, which I'm not even exaggerating, it really is a river's worth of quicksand. I have no idea how this happens. If a river dries up, it turns into barren dust. But you know, that's just me, I guess. And as you know, quicksand in movies is gonna do exactly what it does, and Chicken Hair gets stuck in it. Meg then uses her whip in order to get him out, and in a comical fashion, he pops out of there along with Meg, and they both land on Abe. Wait, are those chicken legs? Hold on a second. Chicken hair! Oh, that's where the name comes from! I told you I was great at puzzles. Oh yeah, I uh, kind of forgot to mention. Chicken hair wears these uh, fake rabbit feet to hide his real feet, which are chicken feet. These uh, same fake feet are now stuck in the quicksand, leading Meg to find out the secret behind the chicken hair's name. I told you I was great at puzzles. You didn't exactly solve anything, Meg. The answer got literally shoved in front of you. But anyway, they soon enter a bamboo forest and get promptly captured by what I can only describe as Minecraft pigs. No, 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 not that kind of Minecraft pig. This Minecraft pig. 
They look like regular pigs on their own, but when they stack on each other or link together, they turn into cubes, which is kind of adorable. They then find a way to escape, falling through this huge asshole in the ground that coincidentally leads to their last destination. If you feel like they got there just a little too easily, don't worry, we'll tackle that later on. So they then enter a cave that they got to by using, and I quote, the nearly impassable pass, which is kinda bogus. So they went into a cave, and they have to go through three trials as the legend says. Why is it always three? Why can't it ever be two trials? As Mr. Wolf says in the final scene of the bad guys, you know, industry standard. No. The first two trials are pretty status quo in terms of deadly trials. The first trial is the classic wall compression trap with spikes. The second one was a huge circular object chasing you down a hallway. The third one though is rather unique. All you had to do to pass this third trial was to rub your belly while tapping your palm on the top of your head. This is the one scene in the movie that genuinely made me laugh. I'm not even lying. It's just so stupid and random that it managed to tickle my funny bone in the best way possible. Props to the writers that made this scene. And so, they get to the stab scepter thingy, and of course, the evil uncle springs up in the nick of time and steals it from them, leaving them stranded on an ice platform with nowhere to go. But of course, the uh, protagonist's plot armor wouldn't allow for them to just freeze to death on that platform, so... Yeah, he can fly. This has got to be the most plot armory thing to have ever happened in animation cinema. If you can name one other scene that is just as cliche as this one, Please, let me know in the comments below. After that, they used Abe's shell to get down the mountain and went on their way back to the kingdom where Lapon had released the hamster army onto the townsfolk, which aren't really doing much to torment the townsfolk. They're more or less just being a nuisance. Chicken Hair then confronts his uncle. They fight over the scepter thingy and of course, Chicken Hair wins. His uncle falls to his death and the movie ends with Chicken Hair and his team going off on another adventure. So, here is the verdict for this film. It's pretty... meh. If I were to rate this movie from 1 to 10, I would give it a 6, 7 if I'm being kind. Chicken Hair as a character is a little too whiny for my taste. Part of the reason why I think that is because of his voice actor. He kind of sounds like he's on the verge of puberty in some parts of the film, which kind of ticks me off for obvious reasons. Abe is pretty funny, but it gets overshadowed by his ability to complain all the time. In terms of the funny sidekick trope, he's not very balanced in that regard. Meg is exactly what I thought she was when I saw this movie for the first time. Furry bait and token female character. Don't get me wrong though, she has her moments in the in the movie where she was legitimately cool, but that doesn't mean she is flawless. There are moments in the film where I thought she's kind of portrayed as a Mary Sue. Lapan is basically Jafar from Aladdin and Scar from The Lion King, compressed into a rabbit-shaped zip file. And I feel like if my Gator is any help in this situation, he's a bit fruity. He's a little bit gay. He kind of gives off the gothic gay vibe uh, when I look at him. This is not a character flaw by any means. It's just something that I noticed. The movie overall is not that bad. Like I said, it's half decent. The flow of the story is kind of meh and doesn't contain much outward conflict. That's why Chicken Hair and his crew were able to get to their destinations rather quickly. Would I recommend this movie to you? Absolutely, most definitely. It's not on the same level as Zootopia or The Bad Guys, but if you are looking for a movie that is family friendly and can be enjoyed by people of all ages, then this movie is definitely for you. I recommend this movie 100%. Just, you know, don't have your expectations high. Thank you all so much for watching uh, today's video. Please remember to like and subscribe if you're new here and check out the Patreon if you got the time. This has been your fellow Degenerate Cook Boss 88 and I'll be seeing you guys again in the next video. Stay foxy, much love.